One World's YouTube channel. This is 21st Century Conversations. Our conversation today is about women of color pursuing careers in science and medicine. I have a dynamic group of high school students and two physicians from Yale with me. And we're going to talk for the next several minutes about the importance of women of color going into the sciences and into medicine and not allowing barriers that are put up through our system of inequity to prevent these young people from attaining whatever vision they have for themselves. And so Alice, tell us your name and what school you go to and what you want to study. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alice Lee and I'm a rising senior from West Haven High School and I want to hopefully study cellular and molecular biology. Cellular and molecular biology, not hopefully, you will. <laughs> study. I will. Yes, <laughs> Vanessa. My name is Vanessa Hanson Cordy. I'm a graduated senior from Engineering and Science University Magnet School, and I'll be attending Columbia University in the fall, studying chemical engineering. Chemical engineering, right. Vanessa. My name is Vanessa Kulor. I'm also a graduated senior at Engineering and Science University Magnet School. And what you're going to study? Oh, I'm going to be studying biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering. My name, Nicole. Is, my name is Nicole Rivera Rodriguez, and I will be attending UConn next fall. I'm also a graduate from the ESOMS community. And you're, what you're going to be studying at, at UConn? I'm going to be majoring in biology. And you want to be a physician? Yes. Yes. And so we'll say, let's hear it for ESOMS. We have <laughs> three students from ESOMS. And that's a New Haven public school. It's a magnet school, and it was ranked number three of all magnet schools in Connecticut for 2015-2016 school year. Go ESOM. <laughs> and Bobby. My name is Bobby James. I'm a rising junior at West Haven High School. And you're going to study? I'm interested in biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering. So these are all people who are interested in the sciences. Dr. Rochelle Yarborough, tell us a little about you. My name is Dr. Rochelle Yarborough, and I'm currently finishing my fourth year in family medicine residency up at Middlesex Hospital in Middletown, Connecticut. I went to Howard University for undergrad, and then I was at Yale for my MD and PhD degrees. She has an MD, PhD, folks. <laughs> and Dr. Marcella Nunez Smith. Great. I'm Marcella Nunez Smith. I'm an associate professor of medicine and public health at the Yale School of Medicine. Yes, and you do all kinds of other things. Other and things. we will put that up on our YouTube channel for people to see. What do you guys want to talk about for the next 10 minutes? I would say this question is for anyone really, especially being like a first generation student. How do you, I guess, work with your parents and explaining them the different struggle that they may have faced in school to what you're facing and dealing with now? Mm -hmm. Nice, nice question. So I, I don't have um, experience in particular with that because my parents were born here um, and so growing up in this country it was sort of the same struggles. Um, but I think it's great, a great question and, and having those open lines of communication with your parents is really important just in general. Yeah, I mean, and I will say, and so right, it has multiple um, sort of interpretations, right? Because we have to think about those who are first generation here and then we have to think about those who are first generation in college mm -hmm. and what that particular unique experience is like. Um, and so I, I would say I'm really happy to see many colleges, universities, and now graduate schools creating particular safe spaces for first generation mm -hmm. students um, and recognizing the, the difficulties and challenges that are unique to, um, to coming with that identity also. Oh, so being a woman of color, have you ever experienced any discrimination in college or? Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm, oh. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Have you ever experienced any discrimination in college or in the work in the workplace? Yeah. How did you deal with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, I have now been a practicing physician um, for I don't know. 15 years or so. Um, and so I, I have a, a lot of experiences I've chopped up. And so I think it, over time it's changed. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was your age um, and your stage, I think I cried, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I think I certainly cried a bit and felt sad uh, and lonely and afraid. Um, and uh, But that changes over, over time. And I'm so really inspired because you all have 
confidence and are self-assured, and I think we'll be fine. Um, I don't cry anymore, let's be clear. Um, and, uh, and now, given you know, where I am in thinking about the hierarchy of, of medicine, um, I'm very fortunate to be able to, um, to call out what I see. Uh, and try to think about remedy because it's really yes. not about me anymore, right? Yes, yes, it's yes. about those who are coming behind and it's about the patients who are particularly vulnerable mm -hmm. in our system. Mm -hmm. Now, I have two key questions. Um, for, for black and Hispanic students or students of color, biracial students, who might not have at home mm. the type of help yes. they might need. Mm -hmm. Many of our students don't have parents who have ever been to college. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're being raised by grandparents, some of them don't even have a high school mm -hmm. education. How do you get past that? Where do you turn to get the kind of help and support you need so you can realize your ambition yes. to go to medical school or to become a biochemist yes. or whatever? Yeah. What do you do? So I hope that the school guidance counselors are a resource for people. I know that in some places that is true and other places unfortunately that is not true. And so if you're a student where you're at a place where you feel like you're not getting that support in school, I think also reaching out to community resources, whether it be in your church or place of worship or at Yale, people you meet or you know look someone up online, I think it's really important to, to reach out and to sort of put yourself and your interests out there to access people who you may not realize will be allies or will be Yes, you know, never be afraid to ask. Never be afraid to ask. And this is a very important thing. People send me emails from all over the country, you know, literally just saying, I've been spending the day Googling, like, who are yes. physicians of color in yes. this country, yes. in this yes. community, yes. right? And your name came up. And so, you know, be proactive. Um, if the person never answers you back, what have you lost? Right. If they yeah. do, you have gained the world, right? So take those risks always mm -hmm. um, and, and don't give up for sure. Would you all say that in your schools that you have always had the kind of help you need with from your guidance counselor, from your teachers? Would you always say you have had the help you needed? Vanessa, you're shaking your head. So. No, no, <laughs> no. Ahead, I up. don't. I don't think so. And I think that sometimes, especially with like a lot of careers changing and new careers coming out, a lot of parents and guidance counselors and even teachers may not know exactly how to mm -hmm. help you. And so, one of the great things about ethons and going to school with Vanessa and Nicole is to also seek advice from your peers. Yes. So, if I see someone doing something like really interesting, yes. or like Nicole's research or something that she yeah. did last summer, you know, don't be afraid to ask them because it's not really necessarily a competition. You're all right. together yeah. as well. I'm so glad you bring it up about it's not a competition. That's an important thing yeah. for us because, you know, part of how the system sabotage kids of color is to put in, they single out one or two kids to be the stars, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it becomes a competition. There is a, it's a, it's a very insidious system. If you speak a certain way, mm -hmm. if you dress a certain mm -hmm. way, if you conduct yourself a certain way, you might be the chosen one. Mm -hmm. But look at, and that's great to be the chosen one, but what can you do for those who have not been chosen? Mm -hmm. yes. How can you help those kids? Mm -hmm. You know, because when kids see, I'm a black person, I see you a black person, you are getting all of these accolades, and nobody pays me any mm -hmm. mind, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm really not worth anything. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we reach out to those other kids who might not be as fortunate. They might not have parents who are as you know, alert and aware of what is happening. Parents go through all kinds of things, and some of us have parents who are really with it and on top of things, and some of us don't. And so it's important that we help each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions, comments? I was just going to add on to what Vanessa said. It's sure. really important to re for students to reach out to their peers and also try and investigate like your peers' family because I know a lot of my mm -hmm. friends' family mm -hmm. members are doing things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go over to their house. And say, hey, what's, your, what's your dad doing right now? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, just reach out. Just don't be afraid. As we keep saying, don't be afraid to don't ask. Don't be afraid. And definitely take risks. If I can say one thing, I, I had a conversation today with a young woman who came down from Boston because she's interested.
interested in going to med school, right? This is another sort of, I sent an email and, and came down. And um, uh, and she's thinking about where to apply to medical school. And she's, she's sort of pre-selecting the places she won't apply to. So don't do that. Right? <laughs> don't do that. Always make the, the reach. I have a very good friend who applied to medical school, many, and got into one medical school. Mm -hmm. One is all you need, by the way. Right. The one she got into was... Harvard Medical School, yeah. right? Wow. Um, and so, <laughs> if you're going to get into one medical school, that is right? Awesome. I mean, or Yale, or, or Yale, but, yeah, but, yeah. but it was going to be one, right? And so, I think I love that story because this friend is is a peer of mine, and and is very successful, and has gone on to do all the things that she wants to do. Mm -hmm. But did she listen to the voices in her head or the voices on the outside yes. who would say you would never get in? Why are you applying there? Her dreams would have been dashed about getting to be a physician and going to medical school. So you just don't know. You can't sit on both sides, right? You can't be the admissions committee right. and the applicant. Right. So if you want to go somewhere and you think you would thrive there and you think that it's well aligned with your learning style, you should you should go for it. Just go for it. Don't tell yourself no. And if you don't apply, they can't tell you yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Exactly. If you Yes. And then last word, we have to wrap up. Go um, ahead. So there are a lot of people in this world who are not culturally aware. Yeah. Do this is for everybody. Do you take the time to stop and teach, or do you move on to like for your next opportunity? Wow. That's great. Question. It depends. Yeah. It yes. depends. And the answer is is yes. I mean, sometimes it's right to stop and teach because it is a teaching opportunity. It's also not your job to really be teaching and educating everyone. So it's fine sometimes to say like, you know what, is this actually you mean about isn't cultural awareness. my job? Yeah. yeah, about cultural awareness. And institutions have an obligation, and organizations have an obligation to be doing some of that work. Um, so the answer is it depends, but don't always feel like that is your obligation or responsibility to stop and teach mm -hmm. others who can also be doing stuff teaching too. Yeah. yeah, I want to say something about Yale because Yale has a, a center for multicultural affairs. And so Yale is probably a little different. You might go off to schools that might not have mm. a center for multicultural affairs. It's important if you take anything from tonight is to is the awareness that if, you, if it doesn't exist in the space you're in, try to find it. Thank God for the internet. Yeah, try you know, there's the internet, but there's organizations such as One World and there are other places that you can reach out. And reach out to get information, but reach out and help each other. And, and form teams. Find those people who are doing great things or their parents who are involved in great things. Find those people and connect with them. and. Lift each other up. Lift each other up. I'm so glad you all joined us for this conversation. Um, you are just listening to a YouTube segment of One World's 21st Century Conversation in the studio with me, Dr. Marcella Nunez-Smith, Dr. Rochelle Yarborough from Yale, Bobby James, a rising junior from West Haven High School, Nicole Rivera Rodriguez, from a graduating senior from ESOMS, uh, Vanessa Cooler, a graduating senior from ESOM. Vanessa and Hanson Corti, a graduating senior from ESOMs. And Alice Lee, who is a rising senior from West Haven High School. I'm glad you joined us for this YouTube segment. Visit our One World website, learn a lot more about what we do. And we thank everyone who tuned in to this conversation. Please visit us on Facebook and like our page. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Very nice. You're so skilled.